let people know it passed. Yeah. Well, now we have a Come super on. quorum. We're on? Okay, so thank you. Welcome to the Elementary School Building Committee, uh, November 12th, 2015. This is our first meeting after uh, getting approval from special town meeting and special election to fund the project. So, uh, woohoo! That was Woo! <laughs> everybody else involved, the ballot question committee and others, uh, for all the help getting the word out and uh, working with us over the past couple of years to get to this point. Um, so tonight is, again, the first meeting uh, after funding, so uh, we're now proceeding to the next phase of the project. And uh, one of the things we'll review tonight with Compass is the, the project schedule moving <coughs> forward. Uh, and uh, you know, kick off that next phase. We also have, uh, as you know, the, the uh, Compass and DRA we've worked with to this point, we're operating under a contract through feasibility phase, and now uh, we'll be reviewing contract uh, amendment proposals to continue working moving forward and vote on those tonight. But first, uh, we have some minutes and, and bills, invoices, so. If anyone would like to make motions on those or ask questions on those, let's do that first. So I'll move the minutes from the October 19th, 2015 me meeting as written. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So now you got six, six votes six. here. Thank you. Right. <coughs> Anybody more. abstaining or not approving? Okay. That was the only minutes. We're pretty up to date on the minutes uh, and some invoices. So I move uh, invoice number CPM 44-15 from Compass Project Management dated 10-31-2015 in the amount of $9,360.55. Second. Any discussion on that one? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? So six in favor, Jeff. Thank you. I move invoice number 000011 from DRA dated November 2nd, 2015 in the amount of $3,960 even. Second. Any discussion on that one? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed or abstaining? No. Six. I move invoice number 2005227 from Yaris and Harrington, dated October 28, 2015, the amount of $317. Oh, thank you. All right. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So six in favor there, too. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Next, uh, Jeff, do you want to kind of introduce the next couple topics, starting with the um, contract amendments? Yeah. And I, I think uh, these uh, were reviewed by John Weaver, Mike yeah. Shepard, and, and Ralph Dumas also. So you guys feel free to chime in. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Joe. Yeah, so as Joe alluded, uh, our, the initial contracts of both Compass and DRA brought us from the initial feasibility concept all the way through the schematic design submission, which was made to the MSBA in uh, August. Um, now that we're ready to enter into the next phase, uh, the bulk of the rest of the contract will be executed at once, and so that will bring us through the completion of design, um, the bidding phase of getting pricing, and then the actual construction and eventually close out of the project. Uh, so the amendments that have been submitted to the, uh, I guess the contract subcommittee um, represent that amount of scope for both Compass as well as DRA. Okay. Has uh, John or Mike, do you want to comment? Yeah, I, I, I reviewed it. The, the numbers seem in line, and uh, <clears throat> they've serviced us very well to date. So I don't have a problem about it. I've reviewed it. And I don't like the numbers, but they <laughs> seem to be in line with what MSBA allows, and yes, they have serviced us well to date. And you're comfortable with the uh, response? You got Problem that Jeff, they're within yes. the range and the reasons why? Yeah. Okay. I reviewed the uh, emails went back and forth, and I concur. Okay. Good. Um, anybody else? Anybody else have questions, Pam? I, I it's more of a in, enlighten me and enlighten the public question. 
With the feasibility study, I'm assuming is now complete. With even though we didn't spend the full six hundred thousand, <coughs> does the remainder that wasn't get spent just not get borrowed against, or does that roll into the the project? Yeah, I, I think we had the same question last meeting. But I'll let Jeff answer it again. Yeah, um, either or is your option. Um, you could choose that a town could choose not to spend it, or we could choose to hold it as part of the budget until we get to the end of the project and, and determine whether it's needed. Meaning it, it's part of the overall full number, the 45.63, so it's always in the budget. Um, we do close the door on the feasibility phase, right. so we wouldn't spend that money unless we got towards the end of the job and needed it uh, for the completion of the project for some reason. Okay. Yeah, I think my question last time was more around the, the flat billing that we were talking about rather than this, the full 600000 so thank you. Oh, I didn't remember if it was you or somebody else, but that question yeah. definitely came up yeah. last time. Yeah. yeah, it was Mike's question last time. Okay, so you, you, Pam, are you comfortable with that answer? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, so is there any other questions or that need to be answered before we take a motion on these? Motion. Yeah. I move that we execute the contract as written with DRA. Go okay. separate motion for the other. Is that, do you need specific wording on this motion, Jeff? Or? No, if he wants, it, um, I, I guess I, I defer to you guys on, yeah. on that. I mean, that uh, it's included as in the packet, so everybody yeah, in this committee the knows what, yeah. what it is. Okay, uh, so there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion on that one? Uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody <coughs> opposed? Or abstaining? No. So I abstain. Uh, you're going to abstain. Okay. That was five. Okay. And one. Thank you. Okay. I'll pass that down too. Sorry about that. Thank you. Okay, and uh, I move we execute the contract as drafted with Compass Project Management. Okay, uh, is there a second on that? Second. Any discussion? No? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody uh, voting against? Anyone abstaining? I abstain. Okay. Uh, you don't have to answer why you're abstaining, but would you care to share? No. Okay. All right. Uh, your opinion on these things is valuable, and um, you know your your opinion expressed at the beginning of this discussion was it was an important factor, I think, for people. So. Um, all right. So that takes care of the the contract amendments. Uh, and then uh, anything else on that, Jeff? Yeah, so uh, the next big contract on the project would be uh, construction management at risk. And so I want to update the committee that um, we've submitted the request to the Inspector General as of today uh, to utilize the construction manager at risk process. Um, the next step for this committee would be to elect a subcommittee that would be responsible for uh, reviewing and approving the rounds of actual proposals that would come in from the construction team. So I'll take a step back to explain what that means. So once we move forward, we would issue a request for qualifications uh, advertised in the central register for any construction management firm to submit their qualifications as why they think they're capable of uh, building your project. Um, in order to evaluate those, the state stipulates you have to have a four-person committee uh, comprised of uh, one representative from the owner's project manager, uh, one representative from the ar architectural firm, and two members from this uh, building committee. Um, those are the four voting members that are responsible for moving the contract proposals through to the next phase and through the final phase. Any member of this committee is also welcome to attend and be part of the process, but uh, by state statute, you have officially have four people as part of the selection committee. So the first step would be to advertise and request the qualifications. Uh, a number of firms would then submit. The selection committee would evaluate those firms based on their qualifications and shortlist them to typically three to four firms. 
um, you would then ask those three to four firms to submit an actual proposal. So a separate request for proposal would go out. They would come back with an actual proposal with their detailed team that they're going to bring to the, to the table as well as their price. And the second round, you evaluate not only the technical skills of the team, but also their cost. All those things are factored into your final decision. And typically, we do interviews of the, that short list of proposals. So an interview would be part of the process um, to help this town decide who would be the best fit for you to build your new school. So what I'd like to do uh, tonight's meeting is to form that subcommittee, and then we can take it offline and talk about what's the appropriate time to advertise and solicit and, and roll that out. Um, so from the, the, uh, the professional side of the team, uh, com uh, for Compass, I would be representing uh, as the, the voting member. And I think um, Jim, would it be yourself or Judd uh, representing? Yes. Yourself, okay. And so Jim, so we would need two members from the committee, um, preferably ones that are familiar with uh, construction management in, in the industry, but um, welcome to anyone that's a, a member on the committee. Okay. Uh, well, I always look at uh, Mike and John Weaver as the two with the most uh, direct, relevant experience in these kind of things. So um, if anyone else is interested, you can join in as well. But uh, I'd like to ask Mike and John if they'd be willing to do this. I would this. be willing. Okay. I, I don't have a problem. Okay. I and do have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> How long does it take the, the, the attorney, whoever at the state, to approve this process for us? Um, by statute, they technically have two months. Um, How long does it generally take in your experience? Three weeks, three or four weeks. Okay. The is it and and the architects now that we got a contract, we're going to be starting tomorrow, drawing up this school. So of course we want this guy on board as soon as possible. I guess my question is, yeah. why do we wait today to submit the thing to the state? Yeah, great question. So um, because of the way the the responsibility has been de delegated in this town we needed the actual vote that happened at town meeting two weeks ago to be certified by the town clerk and town council to then give us permission to request a construction manager for this particular project so the way the town viewed it, it was tied to the approval of the project and then <clears throat> from the time the whoever at the state says yeah it's okay you can use this guy how long is it going to take until we get a person on board after all these interview process? Are we looking at February? Or are we looking at yeah, February or March? Uh, if if we wait the if we wait for the full IG period, we'll be into March, which will be after the design development estimating effort is already done. Now, is this going to have any impact on Jim in terms of my understanding of using this guy was to get him in the day we start? Yeah, and he was starting with him three months later. And probably the most critical part of the process, I suspect. I, I you know, I've just got a problem with that. I, you know, I, uh, Design development is the most critical part of the well, process. And the whole idea of using the construction manager risk is get him on board so that he can he can find things where places where he can save money, places where we're spending too much money, and and on Jim's going to be starting the ball rolling, and this guy's not going to be on board till March. On the other side of that, Mike, right. you know, there's still a long process ahead of us with with Jim and DRA I, and, and Compass, and, and, and I and certainly right. can appreciate. And we did talk about you know being prepared to do this right. relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think you know there's still prep we can do in getting our you know whatever the RFP format is yep. for the state, et cetera, so that. If we're able to get approval in three to four weeks, we can get it out. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming we cannot advertise until we have approval. You can proceed at risk. I mean, you know, you, you, can, you, it's something we could discuss. Something we're going right? to talk about as part of the, sub, the subcommittee. Okay. In terms so of, the point I, is, I think um, can go ahead. Mr. Shepard is uh, quite vehement about um, accelerating the process to get the full benefit. I just want to have this stuff together so that the whole the whole advantage of hiring this firm is is I don't want to lose any ground. No. And uh, so any paperwork we have to get together, if we get it together ahead of time. It would be great. And, uh, so just so. just so people are aware, we we couldn't have submitted the IG application before Monday this week, right? We are we knew that before this week. We couldn't have. That's, right. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, Whether so we all knew it perfectly. We, know, did, uh, we knew we were focusing on robbing this campaign. Yeah. That's right. And that, you know, <laughs> that, that well, compass just was available. <laughs> and, and, and so I guess what we're just um, emphasizing is let's yeah. move it. So I also want people to know the, um, the application to the Inspector General's office is not like a one-page form. It was yeah, about um, 107 pages or something. Yeah that Compass and DRA got together uh, since Monday night. Thank so you. Uh, clearly they were working on it ahead of yeah, time, I, anticipating. I, hey, that's him. I'm so gonna... yeah, I'm <laughs> looking over this direction. I general. make no apologies. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was, it was all teed up, and the, the contracts were into yeah, the right. into the town council before town meeting in preparation. But we had to wait for the proper. We did discuss that yeah. Yeah. through yeah. the chair. It was submitted in October, Mike. So we are aware of it. And 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 full confidence, you know, DRA designs plenty of design build, build design bid build projects, and they have a lot of work in front of them, and a lot of work that they need, know they need to do on their own for the first part of the design development. The the construction manager doesn't even have anything to really respond back to until you get towards the end of design development, because Jim's got to do his work with meeting with the different users and gathering the information as well as. His I don't group. know that I'd agree with that statement through the chair. I, I was hoping it'd be a little bit more of a partnership. It, it will be. So, uh, the I guess another thing, you know, Jeff, you're going to talk about project schedule, mm -hmm. but you know, a month or so, uh, two months ago, we were looking <coughs> at a town meeting and election that would bring us to the end of November, right? Three weeks from mm -hmm. uh, where we ended up being. Um, so, uh, if there's a generally three-week response from IG. Uh, and we don't want to proceed at, at risk of doing anything till the CMR process starts. Then we're we're not you know, not too far. You, know, you, you might decide, hey, we want to start and put the bidding out now, uh, even while we're waiting for the IG response, for example. Um, again, being a novice in the public process, I think we should prep that the minute we have it, like these guys prepped and had the application ready. ready. So the minute we have approval, so the at-risk part can be um, that we're ready. I don't think um, the IG would appreciate it if we put the it out. Yeah, right, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you recommend and we discuss it in the <laughs> subcommittee and we're, we're willing to go earlier, then we're assuming we have that, um, that authority. But I would think maybe if it goes the full two months, we might want to think differently. Yeah. To me, you know, schedule-wise, just is it is what it is. This is this is how it is, and we're we're continually prepared to go to the next step after we hit each hurdle. So, uh, yeah, um, Ralph, yeah, I have a couple of questions. Yeah, sure. For you to, to jump. Uh, the RFQ RFP processes mm -hmm. uh, is that something that uh, the OPM handles, or will you uh, need assistance from my office? For example, uh, both. So we'll handle it in terms of uh, managing the process, but typically the proposals get submitted to the town. So we would need you guys to receive okay. the actual proposals. So we don't have to write the RFP. No, the RFP. we, we will, we'll, uh, the OPM will handle r drafting both the uh, RFQ and the RFP. They'll be circulated around to the subcommittee for all their comments and, and edited. Uh, we'll do all the advertising except where as a non-regulatory agent, we can't advertise on uh, the Combi site, so you would have to submit that. Uh, so it's a joint process where we carry most of the water. Okay, and my, my second question has to do with the MSBA. Does the MSBA play any role now in the selection of a, a construction manager at risk? Or no. are they, it's all us now? It's, it's up to you. Okay, thanks. Through the chair. So is the RFP, RFQ, however you're going to do it, um, is that developed by you, or is there state standards for that? I mean, and, and it relates to Ralph's question. I mean, how much flexibility is there in what's uh, requested? Um, the, I mean, there's statutory language out there that talks about content that's in there, but there are, there are many different samples that we could provide to you um, that, that can be modified for your needs. So we've we've solicited um, construction management construction managers on university projects, on local municipalities, and MSBA. So we have a couple of different templates in our portfolio that we can adapt uh, to your okay. needs. Okay. So uh, so we need uh, so Jeff and Jim Barrett from DRA uh, 
will be part of the four person minimum committee. John and Mike kind of nodded that they'd be willing. Uh, Ralph, you got the MC PPO <laughs> certification. Uh, makes sense. Um, these are going to be uh, publicly accessible in uh, meetings, probably at the superintendent's office uh, conference room. Uh, anyone who wants to be part of it can. Uh, but this is to review to, to the whole process of getting a construction manager at risk on board. So. Um, through the chair, Jeff, with a four member committee, is it we arrive at our recommendation together and bring it back to the full building committee, or how can you go through the process, you know, after we solicit, interview, et cetera? Uh, sure. So, um, by statute, it's the four person committee, but that four person committee could also choose to bring it back to a larger, you know, bring it back to the full committee for, for presentation or for the interviews. But typically, it's like how you guys proceeded with the owner's project management selection. You guys delegated to a subcommittee who did the interviews and, and navigated the process. So it, it does fit into that same uh, type of a uh, solution. But the architect and the OPM were not, quote, voting members uh, when we were doing the selection of the o OPM and then the mm -hmm. architect. So I'm just wondering, you know, vote-wise, um, if that's, you know. Uh, not that it would be no. two to two. No, they're or, very valid questions. And yeah, yeah, I'm sure, sure we'll come to the consensus. Right. It is, it's up to you. We've, yeah. we've done it both ways. A lot of times they do bring it back to a bigger committee, not necessarily the full committee, but mm. a subset of others that may want to be involved uh, that want to manage the interview and selection process. I, I would say that, um, as I recall, with the OPM process, we we appointed a subgroup to do all those interviews and then you came back with your report and the full committee listened and endorsed your decision um, i think that kind of process is one that i would favor you know because it just keeps everything uh, uh, it, it, since we did that in the past it'd be nice to do it that way again uh, I think one of the advantages is that you don't create the sense that there's a smaller group of people making the real decisions. Anything that they do decision point-wise comes back to the full committee. So, now, through the chair, I would agree with that, other than if it costs us too much time, because yeah. that's, yeah. you know, that's part of what comes in. So we have to do our, uh, our duty and, you know, keep you involved along the way so that hopefully at the point in time where it's a full committee, Discussion, it's perfunctory. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need a motion then to appoint the people to this subgroup, mm -hmm. preferably not from one of the people being appointed, I guess. Uh, or does that matter? Can I go with this so moved? Okay. <laughs> Pam? Okay. So, motion to nominate uh, Jeff, Jim, Mike, and John. Second. Okay. We're going to have Ralph on And Ralph, show. right? Ralph. Well, it's only a member of four, right? Technically four yeah, by so statute. I'll be there but just to add Ralph as the alternate. Add four. Okay. Okay. So it, ha it can only be four, or it has to be at least four? It has to be four. at least four. Um, I thought I heard him say only four. Only four. So uh, typically, technically. I can get back to you on the answer on that, but <laughs> typically it's usually four voting members, the way the statute's written. I don't know if it odd. prohibits that more. Which four is odd voting because members you never right. are able of to... Of the subcommittee, so, just four, but not from the building committee. Right. It right. won't hurt my feelings. I'll be there when I need to. So. We need to go. It all stems back from the, you know, selection of of any any subcontractor too. When we get to the point where we're pre-qualifying subcontractors, it's that stage of the project is typically a four-person committee too. It's the way the state statute has been written around that it's initially before an architect gets on board, it's three members of you plus the OPS. So mm -hmm. the further you get into the process, the more you're supposed to rely on your professional. No, I, I, I understand that. It was just when you said voting, that's what confused me relative to, we even have our own confusion of voting here. <laughs> So, okay. Yeah, plus in, in town here, we try to keep uh, voting members to odd numbers to, to break ties. So that's where right. the, we're a little perplexed on there being an even number by statute. 
Right. But yeah, that, that was the odd part. reasons for everything. Is that a pun? I know. <laughs> God. It was not. I can get back to you. I can get back to you on more detailed answers. I mean, so Tim was actually part of the writing of the regulation, so he could quote you chapter and verse a little better than I can. So we've got the motion um, and seconded to have the four uh, members named, and uh, with Ralph attending but not voting. Um, and uh, any any further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed or abstain? Okay. So that was six in favor. Okay, possibly read that. Thank you. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Just a little budget joke. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, Shall we kick off the design development phase, Jeff? Or is there anything else you need to cover on that? Yeah, no, that covers it for the uh, contractual. Oh, and I have uh, hard copies of both those contracts. I'll leave with uh, Kathy and Joe after the meeting. Okay. Um, Do you want to pass those over if they're for Kathy and Ralph? Is that what you said? Yeah, uh, no, you and Kathy. Okay. These are the two for Kathy. Okay. There go. I think you got my pen there. Oh, did I? I because oh, I gave it to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not going to touch it. As sick as you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have two uh, scheduled documents uh, to hand out. I guess we'll go with the, the higher level document first, and then we can get into more of the, uh, the detailed project schedule. So what we're handing out now is uh, we're at the start of the design development phase. Um, and so Jim and his team will have a lot of work over the coming months, um, both at a user group level and at a, at a building committee level. So the regular meetings will be starting with uh, Jim and his team meeting with Lauren and Kathy and, and um, Al and some of the other users to get the detailed information of how the individual rooms get laid out. Uh, that will happen in a parallel process to some of the bigger decisions that we'll bring back to this committee. So the, uh, the bigger decisions are, are outlined on this uh, proposed <coughs> schedule of uh, discussion topics for the design development phase. So I'm going to uh, list these out and then open it up to, to questions. Um, so around the week of December 14th, we're looking to come back to you and Jim's going to present the lead checklist and where we are with an update on that and feedback on what, what's being developed. We'll also have an open discussion about the site design and how it's progressed uh, to this date. And then the third item there is the educational planning progress to date. And so what that will be is a recap of what's been going on in parallel uh, with the educational users. So you'll see the periodic updates as the interior spaces get fine-tuned. We'll be bringing that back to you so you see what's going on uh, as the project progresses. Um, the second set of meetings is in uh, – second meeting is in – January 18th week of and at that point we'll have a detailed discussion on the exterior elevation uh, we talked about materials uh, previously this summer we're going to fine-tune that uh, further on uh, also have a, a further discussion about uh, security and then again an educational uh, update as to where we are with the user group process and uh, lastly the week of February 8th uh, we're going to talk about the major common spaces, so the gymnasium, the cafetorium, um, the kitchen, media center, things that are uh, would be used by the public beyond the user groups or beyond the educational users, as well as uh, you know the AV and technology and some of the important directions of where the, the project's headed. So these are the, the higher level topics that we wanted to bring to you. If there are other items that you guys, uh, specifically the building committee, wants to talk about, you know we're happy to add those into the list. Uh, some of the more uh, minutiae and detail will be ha handled at the educational level and then brought back to you to, as more of a reporting format. 
when you say the, those level of detail we handle at educational level, you mean you'll work directly with the superintendent and school staff? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, typically with a, uh, a, a smaller educational working group, we're able yeah. to uh, mm -hmm. have the opportunity to specifically look at the ed spec, uh, look at the specific rooms that reflect that ed spec, and then ask the question, now as we continue to develop it, how are we continuing to be consistent with what was originally written? through administration, how are we able to define that such as we develop the information. And the opportunity in these meetings would be then to bring that back as kind of a report of here's what's been happening, here's the development, and, uh, and open to this committee for additional comment and redirection if necessary. Okay, makes sense to me. Mike? Uh, I guess it's for Jeff. Jeff, is it reasonable to expect on the meeting on the 14th We'll have a report from the, the uh, engineering firm regarding the utilities relative to DPW, gas, and electric. Um, yeah, we should, we'll have an up, a progress update that yeah. you know, should be much further but, but along. I mean, at this point now, the, the civil engineer firm has been authorized as of tonight to you know, proceed with their work, and so that was part of what was holding them up um, previously, and so now they can move forward with their full design. Yeah, but I, I, think, we, I think we should proceed with all due diligence regarding the DPW and that sure. issue and, and uh, um, I don't I don't want to wait till two years now to really <laughs> get shot. Yeah let's let's uh, so you Jeff you're just asking for additional items to add that would definitely be one. Okay. You did want electricity at this building. Yes, yeah. that would be yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, yeah. just a typo yeah. Jeff on the year. Uh, just yeah. Yeah. Number two and number three, that was a small January detail. Back to the future. <laughs> Moving ahead. This was my work product, and yeah. the start of the new year is always a I tough get it. one. Oh, believe me. <laughs> no, we're just we're in budget mode, so yeah, we're already FY17. S through the chair. So, looking at the master schedule uh, that's been developed prior, um, it does look like we won't get much, if any, benefit. From the CM during design development, if we, you know, are adhering exactly to the schedule, we'll know more once we we hear back. Is there a way that you can at least um, start to incorporate where it talks about the various estimates and budgets that they would uh, be done by the CM at risk and, and put the timing and the wording in there, whereas you have the CM at risk. Mm -hmm. farther down, yep. but incorporate it more into the design development uh, and construction document schedule itself. Yeah, so typically, so uh, John's uh, looking at the detailed schedule and all. And that are, Thank you, Warren. In color, too. So is that uh, passing around John's? Uh, oh, yeah. I think. John's referring to line items 131 uh, through 139, which is the CM selection process if you waited for the uh, full yeah. Inspector General turnaround. Um, so on the bottom of uh, the first page, on the front side of the page, on line item number 101 <coughs> and 102. Um, it's basically the commencement of design development. Design development is line item 102, so that's that length of it. So the, the estimating, John, there is listed as 105, so it's at the completion of uh, the design development phase. There's then a three-week time frame of when it would be priced. Um, right now, that would be priced by our independent estimator and Jim's. If the CM's on board, then you don't necessarily need a third estimate, um, and you could choose to just move forward with the CM and, and the architect's estimate. And um, just as a point, when we do talk about the RFQ or RFP, I don't know which, if, you, if it's, you're going to do a two step or it, 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 it's, it's stipulated for two step. Required? Yeah. Okay. So uh, within the RFP component, would we be able to ask for uh, opinions of the current documents to date? So say we were in the middle of design development as part of their professional response. What level of? Don't know yet. I'm just thinking out loud that that may be part of us judging 
how interested they are, how well they respond, what they mm -hmm. see that we might not, and there may be something beneficial that even comes from the response of a firm that doesn't get the money. I just didn't know if that's legally allowed in the public market. I think you could do some level of it. I mean, I don't know that you'd want to turn over the entire set of plans that just ask for a wide open range. You'd probably want to narrow their focus because mm -hmm. you're only giving them a week or, or two, usually two weeks, to, to turn around everything, the price, the numbers, the proposals, as well as the design review, which is what you're requesting. So I think you you can do it, but I think you would want to kind of narrow the focus to ask specific questions. Right. So there is some there. flexibility, and we can discuss it in committee. Yeah. So the schedule I'm handing that I handed out here is uh, it's the you know the baseline schedule for design development as to kind of where we go. Um, eventually, the line items 61 through 82 will all get rolled up and, and condensed. Right now, line item uh, 73 is still open, uh, 73 and 74. So 73 is the um, MSBA has issued a scope and budget agreement, which is the, the numbers that were approved at town meeting. And so the town members will have to, uh, there's four signing members, I think, there that uh, will need to sign that document and return it back to the state. Uh, once that's all solidified, there'll actually be a, a project funding agreement that'll follow on the heels of that, which uh, will then kick in the eligibility for the reimbursements and, and the other parts of the project. Um, so where we are today is basically line on 102, and so it's the start of design development. Um, which brings us to the middle of February, um, as noted both on Jim's handout and uh, and on this schedule. So there's a lot of decisions that'll need to you know be made in that amount of time. Um, and so the the user groups will happen frequently, and as well as you know three big meetings for this group uh, in that time frame, that two and a half month time frame. Okay. Are you all prepared for that? We are. All right. <coughs> Just a refresh of this man. So that, this lines us up for you know uh, construction starting in fall of uh, of next year. And obviously, once the CM is on board, you know we can fine tune that and talk in more detail. Um, and you know, obviously, once the design develops itself, you know we'll have a better understanding of the full schedule. Okay. Now, who was on that design committee? We were both for the education users. And you guys. Yes. And then we'll be bringing in department heads as necessary based on the topics. And Jim's got a, another list of topics that we'll be sharing with uh, Kathy and Lauren next week at our first meeting about which department heads we need to bring in at which points. Uh, and Al as well, facilities will be an important key member yeah, to those projects. For sure. Because again, the decisions you're going to be making them to recommend for decisions at these levels are by people that haven't necessarily been through the process before. Mm -hmm that are um, cost effective so you'll monitor that within the schedule that you um, our, our, uh, estimate you've been working with mm -hmm. okay. yes yeah so compass and dra will be both working through the process with those to try and keep an eye on cost and scope uh, to make sure we're being consistent. whereas if we had a cm on board that cm would have been at those meetings as well not typically i mean because i mean th you can I mean, that, that's a lot of meetings to bring, you know, the, the CM to, so it's, it's possible. And we could certainly craft that scope when we get to the RFP stage as to what level of commitment you want from them. Um, but they'll be part of the regular team meetings, yeah. I guess we, we can dial it up or down. That's a, that's a detailed yeah, discussion. Yeah, depending on when we're able to get them, um, you know, I found that um, the sooner they're in, uh, the less... Uh, they can say, well, we didn't know that, we didn't say this, where, mm -hmm. and I don't mean it's, it's always, because the reason we're doing CM is to have a team approach, and therefore they should be able to uh, be more helpful than not. The sooner is better than later. Yes, and, you know, and it's in a lot of the uh, effects of cost are determined it's during design really, development. That's right. Would you two agree or disagree with that? I would agree. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the big swings in scope happen at design development. So and schematic design, and you've done a very good job of date of controlling, and, and the schematic design definition is at a very high level, so that's good. 
So we will be looking at you, Jeff, to help with that, given that the CO at risk isn't on board yet, right? The construction manager is not on board yet. So uh, in the meantime, we want to make sure that decisions made by staff during design development, um, that there's a, the, the element of cost control is that you and Jim bring that. Jim? Relative to ongoing cost control, uh, irrespective of whether the CM is at the table producing their estimate or it's a, another third party cost estimator, there's a reconciliation that has to occur uh, between the uh, design team's cost estimator and the third party, whether it is CM or another provided by the town. Uh, so it's still the same type of process in terms of decisions made, yes, but always decisions with an eye on what's the value of what's being proposed relative to our overall budget. Uh, ultimately, that's the same test that has to be uh, made, attained, and ultimately achieved you know, as we go forward. So um, I would agree with others uh, at the table that earlier is better. Uh, I can also share with the table, uh, having been through uh, a, a CM approach, probably as much or more than uh, any other architectural firm in this arena. Um, we've had circumstance where CMs have been brought on board almost at completion of construction dock, and I'm not at yeah. saying that's a great way to go, uh, but that said, uh, we're still able to form a good team working relationship. We still get benefit of that kind of third party, different perspective, looking at things and, you know, able to adjust and change uh, to to recognize that. So um, I'm in agreement earlier is better. Uh, and uh, it sounds as though it's moving on the track that it's as early as is possible here in Hopkinton uh, with what's being proposed. Through the chair, yeah. I will at least um, agree that the reconciliation of estimates that was done by the OPM and the architect, which was a process in, process in and of itself, was very valuable, and there were enough items of difference that it took a while. Um, so a reconciliation of the CM estimate with the architect's estimator or yours or whomever, you know, would tend to have the same level of benefit. However, I would hope that we're going to put more um, uh, accountability on the CM's estimate because they're the ones that we brought on board. And as a uh, uh, just a clarification, I'm assuming when we select the CM at risk, we're not committing them anything but pre-construction and that they have to, whatever it is, meet the goals of the budget. Uh, work as a team member with the architect and you, et cetera, so they don't automatically get the project. Is that correct? So you're committing to the pre-con fee and you're getting to the point where, I mean, there's always an option out of a, any contract. Well, but not everybody in this yeah. committee would necessarily know that. I'm just trying to get yeah. that clarified. So uh, typically the way it would work is that um, you're committed to them for the pre-construction fee, which is to bring you all the way through to bidding. And then they would submit a draft GMP. If you couldn't come to terms with that number, you can always break from that that first CM and actually go back to your second choice CM as a first step, or Jeez, you can yeah. choose to design uh, to just bid it to the general market, which is not what our schedule really allows or wants, because we're looking at doing some early release, if I remember correctly. I haven't gone to the second page yet. Yeah, it's a site and, and foundation. Right. So, it's so which not, could not still be to, done, but it becomes even more convoluted and, and right. An issue. Right. So yes, it's important to have accountability in the construction managers' numbers, and certainly rely on them. Certainly, as we get to the you know the final phase where you're getting to that point where you'd want to do an early site package, you want a strong level of comfort that his number is going to their number is going to hold. Okay. Well, Mike was breathing heavy. I thought he was going to say something. I, I was. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Yes, Ralph. Uh, just for the people at home, who, or the people at the table who might not know, 
Uh, describe GMP, please. <coughs> Can I take that one? Sure. Uh, GMP, uh, gross maximum price yeah, for a project. Gross uh, or guaranteed? Guaranteed. Guaranteed, sorry. Guaranteed. Um, and that that is a, uh, a number that the uh, uh, CM will put together uh, as the total total dollar amount for the project. It will include uh, contingencies uh, both on owner side and on uh, CM side, um, and total scope of work for the project, inclusive of all trades. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, anything else? No. Go ahead. Okay. It's definitely a different animal, seeing that risk. I've never been through it, so it's a learning process for me as well. Well, there's a lot of differences yeah. um, other than just the definition of the price guarantee. Yeah. I mean, one of the, the biggest differences, and tell me, is it 100% savings clause? Or is that one of the things we'll negotiate, or is that normal or MSBA required? They want to, uh, you can negotiate that. Um, okay. It's open book? Yeah, it's all open book. Yeah. So, I mean, those so are the what, two John's biggest whether differences between uh, a GC lump sum bid mm -hmm. and a GMP by a CM. So what John's getting at is there are, there are motivators you can build into a contract if they finish, you know, ahead of schedule uh, or meet specific milestones along the way, and there's a savings to the town, you know, they could be a shared partner in part of that mm -hmm. savings. Those well, are, they can be 100% because that's what they should be doing anyway. Right. Well, it's, yeah, it, it depends, depends on whether you feel they need an incentive. Right. Mm -hmm. and, but you don't have to do incentives. That's, that's an option that the town can exercise. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I think in terms of my comfort level, in terms of having them on sooner <coughs> rather than later, is it, at some point he assumes some ownership of this project as well. So you guys, us. And him as well. And or he her. provides the bottom or her. Could have a them, w they. W and and <laughs> my experience with these projects is, is most of the, the uh, general contractors in the normal course of events will take the plans, assuming we have no CM at risk, and they'll go back and they'll have a guy in the back room and they'll say, okay, what did they leave out? What did they forget? It's called errors and omissions. And <clears throat> It's not unusual to have 40 or 50 change orders in the course of a plan, and, and they're, they're marked up, and they cost people like us, the taxpayers, a fortune. So by having the guy with the ownership or some ownership on sooner rather than later, I hope to avoid that. And so he can see those before they become issues. Yeah, the structural engineer you got did a terrible job, and you know we got to send it back, and we got to do this thing over again. And by the way, you, the town of Hopkins, are going to pay for that. I don't want to do that. I want, I want, I want, obviously to work as a team, but I want this potential general contractor, this CM at risk, because that's what we told the people at town meeting. Is you know, I want him to have some ownership as well, and hopefully we'll be able to get down to the number that we all agree is the right number. But I, I don't want to be sitting here two years from now and find out that oh, we need another fifty grand or a hundred grand, or because well, you guys. You want let, let me. Yeah. <laughs> To the chair, at least defend, um, you know, the architect, the RA is, we selected a very good professional. They're good for, they're not going to have perfect documents. The CM at risk on board early on will help that yeah. even more. Right. But as Jim said, there will be a contingency in there. Right for that. Both, you know, for the CM and the owner within that GMP, and sometimes that gets a little testy even of itself, how you divide the contingency up as to who controls it. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess I just wouldn't want your expectations to be of perfection. No, I, I was just hoping that the whole process, the CM at risk, like, would, would not necessarily avoid that. Minimum. It, it won't would, avoid it. It, it, it would make it, it a little bit better. better. Right. It's the minimum. That's what I'm looking for. Right. The, and, the construction and, manager won't take on the liability of errors and omissions of other consultants, but they do help minimize it by providing design feedback in the process. That's what I'm looking for. Yes, if, I, if I may, yeah. one way that we've seen that effort exhibited is through scope review at the various bidding phases yeah. of, of the project, such yeah. that the CM will bring in the apparent low bidder, and it's a it's a sit down recorded. Yeah. Uh, 
flip page flip of the section, yep. the spec section, and really testing for gaps, which is really effective in terms of finding if, in fact, there are divisions between specification sections where there's uncovered work. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the point where you find out that we can't fit all this stuff in the ceiling. You know, and that's all very helpful. And and oh, they got wait sooner rather right. than later. It's called rather. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But again, I, I also want to make it clear because I seem to be a bit of a curmudgeon tonight that I do not believe in pointing fingers at architect and CM when problems occur, and we will work them out. And there are reasons for contingencies unless there's really gross uh, issues. Um, I don't think we should ever develop that attitude. No bank was issues because you're going to find them all before we get to those. <laughs> it, 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 it's not a perfect process, and this is a custom building that's never been designed before. And it will be gorgeous. Oh, that, <laughs> gorgeous is not the issue. You said it. I mean, something might not fit here, there, whatever, with with relative technology. So, just. just yeah, you know, we're all we're all one team here, and then when the construction manager is on board, it's that's a critical team member too. Okay. So in the, in the meantime, we're going to count on you to help make sure we don't that that the, how we get through the the steps before that person's on board mm -hmm. is done as uh, you know cost effectively and carefully as possible. All right, uh, is there any any other top topics in this agenda item, Jeff? Or? Or no, that's it. We covered, we covered both design development and schedule. Yeah. So too. And then you you asked us if, if there's any other topics, and Mike gave you one that you we'd like added to these. Yeah, the utility is to be paired with the site yeah. design. Um, lead site design review, educational planning, exterior elevation, security review, educational planning, major common spaces, AV technology review. Um, and then the ti timing wise too so we'll, you know these you see the dates that are lining up and that leads us to that middle of february dates we just want people to be prepared you know how quickly the information will roll out and how quickly decisions will you know need to be made which you're no stranger to after your, your july meetings right, and a lot's going to fall on you and your team because three months is not a lot of time during a hol two holiday seasons to get through design development on a $35 million project. And we have budget meetings too, so. Minor yeah. details, that, they don't count anymore. Third holiday season. Right. <laughs> yeah, three of them. What's the other one? Three years. Oh, that's, that's all one <laughs> period. You Are there any other the special focus topic areas people want included? I would seem like in educational planning progress today we would have the opportunity to talk about special education space and things like that. Do yeah. that need to be called out separately? Or see, so you've got the AV technology called out separately, but that's probably because of all the unique It's one of those. Elements. It's one of those industries that is forever evolving. And yeah. People are very opinionated in general, you know, <laughs> everywhere types of devices, about what, yeah. what they would like to see, especially new buildings. It's, a, you know, so it's, it's yeah. an important discussion. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, uh, we had an agenda topic for a communications plan. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, guess, um, well, I can help pick that off. <laughs> you, Please you do. Know, we Why don't were, we call it a communications report? Yeah, report. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, let you, I'll give you a chance to do a report. But, um, <clears throat> you know, we, um, when we started off as a committee, we said, look, uh, by the time we come to a vote uh, at town meeting and election, not everyone will agree with every detail of what we've done, but we want them to vote yes anyway, based on their comfort that we carried ourselves out the right way, the process had integrity. And so I think moving forward, you know, we want to continue in that same uh, mm -hmm. spirit of uh, inclusiveness and communication. Yeah. Um, certainly, uh, it's different leading into the town meeting and election, but uh, we will. We're not going to just turn off the lights and go into a back room and no. <laughs> call the decisions now. But uh, certainly it's going to be a different 
uh, different tone and content to what we're doing now versus before, but we want to have that same spirit of inclusiveness and communication. Sure, and I anticipate there still being updates to Facebook pages, Twitter pages, ESPC updates, video ESPC updates. Um, we'll continue to meet here as often as we can, I think, to broadcast it out. Um, we'll continue to invite the public to come and offer comment and ask questions at the beginning of each meeting. So I see it's almost like in terms of the in terms of the level of communication, it's probably just a quick little rewind to just a couple months ago to sort of that same uh, cadence. Mm -hmm. um, won't be as sort of you know frantic and and uh, <laughs> dense as it's been for the last couple of months. But uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll we'll continue to get the important things out there to people and, and invite them to, as always, sort of continue to inspect and, and question and. Okay. Good. Joe, yeah. if I may, uh, yes. May, if I may, um, I just I just want to uh, put a shout out to you, Rob. Um, I personally learned a lot from you <clears throat> in terms of you know how to get people excited and and keep after them. It was never <laughs> enough. Um, you just you Turn you really you, you were you know really put your heart and soul into it, and um, I think you deserve a lot of credit for the numbers of people that came mm -hmm. out. Um, I saw you on corners all over town, um, <laughs> <laughs> waving wherever you could. But then, you know, the, the day of the of the ballot, when you know I was going over there at noon, and you were already shivering in place. <laughs> and then, and then you joined him, Joe. I saw you there, and oh, I just there at seven. Oh, he was there, <laughs> there at seven. I, I, you know, I just I, as you've said, absolutely a joint effort. I really uh, just want to say that in terms of communicating and advertising and getting people I really learned a lot from watching you so thank you thank you yeah thank you Rob <laughs> absolutely uh, uh, you did an outstanding job as the uh, member of the community with communications and or marketing <laughs> so we're not sure yeah. which but you did an awesome job <laughs> yeah. thanks thanks, thanks. Well, thank you for everyone else too everyone else had a lot to do with it and, okay. and uh, you know I couldn't do it without the team so Thank you. Good. Yeah. You should so run for mayor them all. of Hopkinton. He did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have one of those. <laughs> we don't have one He's of those. Keeping the sign frames. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I'm not throwing out. Yeah. I'm not throwing out the sign frames. Or <laughs> <laughs> it would kill me. All right. Uh, any, anything else we need to cover? No, uh, at the end, I'd like to maybe uh, pick some meeting dates for those three weeks. Yeah. Uh, if there's a specific day of the week that's best for everybody, or it may change between the December and the January okay. February meetings. But let's pull out be our good to, Since we have a good group tonight, most of you guys are here, it'd be good to try and put that on the calendar. Week of 1214, is that where you're taking us? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's the week that where our budget is due out to the school committee mm -hmm. on Thursday night. Uh, Mm -hmm. Your budgets do that Thursday. Yeah. It's okay. Does that mean you have more time at the beginning of the week? <laughs> Did you hear that, Ralph? Well, okay. No, I think it goes out on Friday. Um, so it'll be those. like a Tuesday that week better for you, or yeah. give you some more breathing room? No, we can figure it out. So I see somebody's got yoga. So it is two, oh, in her Tuesday dreams, in red. Tuesday, Kathy, I don't know, do, do you, are you or Lauren involved in speak meetings? That's on no, Tuesday. Okay. not on a regular basis. Okay, so then I might just have a problem attending because yeah, Lori will be at a speak mm -hmm. meeting. So which day are we going to Tuesday or Wednesday? Wednesday works. Tuesday's good. Tuesday works for me. Wednesday does not I work for me except for Tuesday. a potential later yep, arrival. that works. 6.30? So which Tuesday? Six thirty Tuesday. Does anybody that not work for anybody? No, you guys. Just as much. Oh no, it is a problem. Oh. I won't be there. Is it board of selectmen? They usually meet on Tuesdays, right, Pam? Yeah, that's what I was just saying. I, I think it's first and third. But this is a Wednesday. Oh, I think no, it's a no, Tuesday. Tuesday. The fifteenth is a Tuesday. Apologize, fifteenth. John, you don't have a problem with Wednesday other than arriving late, like 15 minutes late, an hour I, late? I don't know. You tell late. me what the traffic's going to be like. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming from Boston, I'm coming from Canton. Bad for Rob. Oh, no, that's a place impossible. you can't get to from here. Yeah, well, it might not be as bad because if I can get over to 95 and up, because I came from Taunton today, and yeah. a piece of cake. <laughs> so, you want to go Wednesday? Yeah. Jim, do you have a conflict on Yeah, that's a tough that's a tough area there. Right, wait, John? wait, we we, we we gotta have Jim. The well it'll, uh, we it'll be survive. myself or Judd. 
uh, that night if in fact there'll be coverage by DRA uh, on that Wednesday. <laughs> it's just I, I have a conflict that you don't you know what with, a, with another. Do you not have a conflict on the 14th? Uh, the 15th, Tuesday was the date we were looking for. Tell us what works before I'm sorry, the 15th. 15th. Yeah. Are you available? I am. Because I think, at least at the first one, I, I, yeah. then we all love Judd. Um, it's probably a good one to make sure we have you. So who can't make it in this group on the 15th? Rob. I can't. We didn't talk about the 14th, did we? Nope, not yet. That's Monday. Who can't make the 14th? I'm available. You're available? Yep. I'm available. I'm available. You're available. I'm available. You're available. It's Monday. Oh. Yeah. No uh, appropriations on Mondays this time of year? Hopefully not. <laughs> Does that not give you enough time to prepare, Jim? Okay. Because it's a Monday. <laughs> yes. Monday seems best because there's no board of selectmen meeting, there's no yep. conflict for Rob, uh, John. It says okay. a special okay school Monday. committee budget meeting on Monday. Oh, it does? Who no, knows? our budget meetings are all Thursday. Oh, sorry, that was Thursday the 10th. Yeah. No, looking at Monday. No, I, it rolled up too fast. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah looking at that, and then fast, it jumped Pam. up. I was like, wait. I was like, I don't, I don't okay, know. So, what time? Mm -hmm. Six thirty. Six thirty. Yep. Can Here. Yeah. And do we really need uh, to I'll you. How's that? schedule them okay. to nine when we know we can't I don't, yeah, live past that? that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. There you go. Okay, so uh, Monday the 14th of December. Yep. How about the uh, January? Uh, we're looking oh, at the week of the 18th. I don't, is the, is the 18th, is that MLK? Mark, yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. So you guys are all free that day. Then. So <laughs> maybe, uh, wait, 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 which maybe Wednesday? The week, the week Wednesday the works for me. Just put in to the avoid other potential selectmen in our school committee meetings. So yes. This is the week of the 18th. Now we've got to go to another year. Works for me. 20th? 20th work, Jeff. Uh, Pam's hesitating. I'm hesitating only because I know that there are certain things that are happening in January, but I think they're all related to Tuesday nights and Board of Selectmen joint meetings. No, oh, good. Okay. So we're saying that the Wednesday, Wednesday the 20th. Yeah. I'll be there. I'll get in trouble. 2016. Why is it yes. <laughs> Oh, it's just her 65th birthday. No. <laughs> it's during the week. That's not don't special. Count. They don't count. She's not going to want to celebrate it anyway. That's not true. I'll be reminded. She didn't want to remind of the 60th, so. Okay. All right, so. Uh, oh, yeah, I don't think that, they Jeff. Will. Yep, so okay. we're talking about the 20th at 630 yeah. again. Happens yep. in Vegas, Beach stays camp. in Vegas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then maybe long range to try and nail down the week of the eighth. Uh, we were trying to get it in before what school vacation, the so the twentieth. That's why well, we can. The eighteenth uh, is a holiday. The week of February eighth. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, same thing. Monday or Wednesday is probably best. Got your kiddos. So, uh, anybody have trouble with Wednesday, the tenth? Nope. No. Yeah. Are too quick. Okay. Let me go. Where are we? Wednesday. We're on the tenth. Yeah. February. Tenth of February. Sometimes that is one that I currently have a, oh. a scheduled conflict. Are you going to be done today? Okay. Do I to the no, Monday the eighth. Oh, is she done? Monday the eighth. Okay, that's okay. I'm open. You don't have to be okay. Does Monday the eighth of February? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Done. Good. Okay. That's what you get when you're so organized. And Jeff, you will uh, send it on mine or the jobs that are here. The other yeah. subcommittee meetings and other staff meetings, right? Yep. Okay. It's on your calendar anywhere else. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay, I think that's it. That's all we had on the agenda. So if anyone uh, has any other business, has the time. Otherwise, yeah. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Nobody doesn't like you, Pam.